we are welcoming you to this LCP webinar for newcomers, uh, which will aim to present you the local single sky implementation process that we run. My name is Maria Koleva. I'm the head of unit of the uh, planning and support uh, in your control, which is responsible for the process. And today, together with my colleagues, I will uh, go you know, with you through the different uh, modules that we have uh, prepared. Today, we have here in the room people from the team of the planning and support unit and also the colleagues from SDM who also work with us in the context of the LC+. So before we start, we have some practicalities uh, related to the way how the session will be organized. So first of all, you all will be muted and uh, you won't uh, have any video. Uh, we have two ways of communicating with uh, you, uh, which are going to be for all technical matters through the chat. You all should be able to see a small um, icon uh, saying chat. So if you have any technical problems related to the connections, uh, to the connection or the way uh, how uh, the, the training is run, uh, please use this uh, chat channel. Uh, as we would like to have uh, really an interactive session as much as possible uh, in uh, this virtual set setup, the way how we will uh, actually be interacting with you today will be through the Q&A channel. So you all uh, have another button uh, somewhere on your uh, interface where if you have any question related to the material that the panelists will present, please use that one and we will uh, reply to your questions. At the end of each module, uh, we will make a short wrap up and make sure that the answers that uh, you have provided are uh, satisfying to you and in case you have any additional one. Uh, what in between the modules, we will have a short coffee break um, in order not to make the session very long. And also, uh, we would like to inform you that this session will be recorded in order to be available uh, afterwards uh, uh, to the uh, other members of the LSIP community. So after this, so good morning, everyone. It's good to see that everybody's uh, saying hello. But again, uh, if you have any further questions later on, go on through the Q&A uh, chat. So I will start with the first module, which is going to be uh, dedicated to uh, the introduction. Okay, here it is. So we have the first model uh, dedicated to the introduction, the overall context uh, of uh, the LC process and the master planning activities. Then we will have uh, four other more detailed modules, which will uh, cover in the second part the requirements, which will explain the why of the process. Then we will have uh, a, sec a third one, which is going to be dedicated to all deliverables that are um, produced based on the the, the different uh, based on the. Um, on the different data that we collect throughout the LC process. Uh, the module four will be uh, dedicated to the process itself. It will describe how, I just apologize, it seems like we have a little technical problem here. Okay, so is this one to be, to be used? You know, this is always the risk of the... <laughs> Uh, of the live sessions, okay. Uh, so we have yeah, the module four, which is describing the process through which we interact with uh, you all, with our st uh, stakeholders. Um, and the module five will cover the um, LC plus tool set, which allows you uh, to uh, 
really provide the required data and for us to uh, later on process it and to feed it into the different deliverables. The module six will be a short summary of all the material that is going to be presented to, uh, to you. Um, here, I just want to draw your attention on the picture that you see, which is the uh, representing uh, the different levels of the ATM master plan. Um, it is uh, uh, well known already for several years. Uh, and uh, today it is important to know that this LC process, the one that we will present to you, is going to be based on the latest edition of the ATM master plan, uh, which is edition 2020. It covers different levels. The level one, which is the executive view of the master plan, level two, the planning and the architecture view, and the level three, which is the master plan level, the, the master plan uh, level three, the implementation view, and uh, the underlying LC process beneath it. Uh, it is important to know that, uh, as I mentioned, the master plan is updated uh, uh, not so frequently, every three, four years, while the level three and also the LC plus reporting is an yearly uh, uh, run uh, task. Um, but all of this we will cover more in depth, in details in uh, throughout the different modules of the presentation. Before I continue, I just would like to tell you that uh, in order to ease the navigation uh, through and your orientation throughout uh, the different modules, we do have a specific uh, color coding, which will uh, allow you to uh, really keep a track uh, and know uh, where we are at uh, any moment. So now I will switch off my camera and I will proceed with uh, the rest of the presentation. In module one, we will uh, cover four main parts, which, uh, we, uh, which are the scope and the purpose, um, and uh, really an overview of the context of the planning uh, uh, activities. Then we will go into the reporting and uh, monitoring mechanism and also uh, introducing uh, the simplified framework uh, which we, uh, in which we work, but also to provide you the broad picture related to the Eurocontrol's role uh, in this uh, related to the ATM master planning uh, and uh, reporting activities. Okay, so during this webinar, we will really focus on uh, the core activities that we perform uh, together with my team and uh, uh, since uh, a few years with the colleagues of ATM, uh, of SDM and also the uh, LC process itself. It needs to be uh, clear that what is not going to be part of this briefing is the other planning and monitoring uh, engagements that we also have, uh, um, which are uh, really uh, related to the ICAO GAM, to the audit, to, to the systems. We will not really get into uh, details into uh, that presentation. Uh, and also, we will only briefly cover the work that we are doing with uh, SDM. The current presentation will provide you with a broad overview of the single European Sky implementation planning and reporting mechanism uh, at both pan-European and local levels. Uh, it covers the questions such as what is the ATM master plan level three, uh, what is uh, really the implementation view, uh, what exactly is an implementation objective? Uh, what are the tools and the processes of the ATM implementation planning and reporting? And what are the criteria that we set in order to determine, uh, determine whether uh, there is an implementation progress or not? Um, also, very importantly, you will also understand of what are the stakeholders that are involved in these activities and who are the users of the, of the data and of the deliverables. Um, we also would like to cover very briefly 
about the evolution. As uh, the LC process uh, is actually already 30 years um, old, it has been established uh, um, in uh, uh, 1993, uh, where the convergence and the implementation plan was uh, supported uh, in um, as a means to monitor the progress and the implementation of the European ATM Harmonization and Integration Program, or also called ICHI. Later on, throughout the years, it has evolved uh, to support the Eurocontrol ATM 2000 Plus strategy. And as of uh, 2008, it was introduced in its current uh, S and SIP LC process, uh, already including the single uh, European sky dimension. Since 2011, we run the process uh, in the way how we will present it uh, today uh, as a fully integrated uh, part and activity uh, in the context of the European ATM master plan, uh, representing its level three and the implementation view. Uh, Two years ago, the process has evolved uh, by uh, fully adapting to ensure the monitoring of the common projects for the CESAR deployment manager. We also know that in the context of the upcoming master plan campaign that is foreseen uh, to uh, take place in 2024, we will also need to further evolve uh, this process and this activity in order to meet the requirements uh, for a simplified master plan uh, and uh, related to it processes. But again, this edition of the cycle will see, still will run um, in the context in which it has been uh, uh, established uh, by the master plan edition 2022, uh, 2020, sorry. So now we will go through the simplified framework in which we work, which starts at the global, uh, which is integrating different dimension from global level to European level and to uh, the local and state level. The master plan level three and the LC planning and monitoring processes, they really tie together all these uh, different dimensions uh, of ATM planning and monitoring. This ensures the consistency among the local level, the European and regional levels, mainly uh, for the ICAC plus area, plus the two comprehensive agreement states uh, of Israel and Morocco, and also the global level that is outlined uh, by the global air navigation plan. Uh, this results in one hand of a process which looks at the local implementation and uh, planning uh, and monitoring, uh, where we refer to the state performance and the stakeholders' plans. But on the other hand, we also provide a link uh, which uh, directly relates to the um, progress of implementation of ICAO European um, of the ICAO ASBUS uh, monitoring process. So all this is done in the purpose to ensure a consistency and um, to provide uh, throughout all the different aspect, uh, aspects and dimensions and to provide a clear picture of how far and how well we are progressing with the different types of implementation. Now, uh, it is important to understand that uh, this process really is situated in this into uh, the broad picture. Um, the single uh, European single sky regulatory framework uh, needs concrete implementation plan for Europe as a whole, and this have to be based on the European ATM master plan. So this is really at European level. This is the main uh, the main document to which we really need to uh, to follow and uh, to make sure that its vision is being uh, coherently and consistently uh, implemented. 
uh, once the European plan has been agreed to, the local and the regional plans have to be drawn up in line with the EU legislation. This will be then used by the different um, air navigation service providers, the regulatory authorities, the military, the airports, the airspace users, but also the MED providers and other stakeholders. The, the individual stakeholders then compile their own implementation progress reports. These are later consolidated at European level so that the aviation community can identify the gap between what is needed at European level and what can actually be done at the local and regional level. As of 2020, the gathering of all this data also becomes uh, through uh, the LC plus processing tool, which is used by the CESAR deployment manager to ensure the monitoring of CP1. And what is the role of your control in all this? We have really a mission to support the European aviation. And uh, at our level, related to the LCP and the ATM master planning level three activities, we are fulfilling this mission by coordinating the contributions to the annual ATM master plan level three implementation plan at ICAC level. Uh, in, which is also part of the ICO Air Transport Global Community and which includes your control member states plus Azerbaijan, Morocco and Israel. Your control also uh, supports the aviation by facilitating the production of the implementation progress reports at local national level, which are made by the national stakeholders. Uh, we are also producing and supporting the production of different consolidated reports at European level, such as the uh, ATM Master Plan Level 3 implementation report and also the GAMP ASB monitoring report for ICAO uh, at European region level. The ICAO report includes nine national states, uh, in addition to the ICAC area with the seven Eastern European countries and two northern African countries. And then we also the decision making uh, by various steering bodies uh, on any remedial action needed to implement the plans. So that will conclude the introductory part. Uh, and as it, uh, for each module, we do have prepared here for you a few uh, questions uh, on which you are invited to uh, reply by clicking on the little pool uh, pop-up that is uh, presented on your screens. Um, and please do so. Give, give your answers. And when you complete it, you will see, we will show you the correct answer and I will hand over to the next presenter. Okay. So here are the results that we see that uh, most of you indicated uh, that both answers are correct. And let's see what is yeah, so this is correct. So that means that you have been following uh, carefully. I hope you will continue to do so until the end of the, the session. And now I hand over to Itzaso to continue with module two. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I would like to present myself. My name is Ita Salva. I work in the LCIP um, support cell group. I also collaborate in the IT tools, and I am also a contact person for two states and an um, objective coordinator. So this morning, I will first introduce you to module two, which, which are the process requirements. And later on uh, during the day, I will be uh, in charge of module five that will introduce you to our tools. So this module will clarify 
why the European ATM master plan and LSC processes were introduced, how this mechanism is created, and what are the links with other reporting mechanisms in Europe. Here we can see the single European Sky and CESAR framework that require stakeholders to agree at European level on the implementation actions prior to local deployment. EU regulations are one of the channels to ensure harmonization. In addition to these regulations, the European states recognize the Master Plan Level 3 and LC mechanisms as the frameworks that will allow to introduce synchronized actions in order to achieve the expected benefits of CES and CESAR and the agreed performance targets. The picture here shows the CESAR performance ambitions related to ensuring high levels of security, reduction in the air navigation services costs, reduction of delays and increase in the capacity following the increase in traffic, reduction of CO2 emissions, improving noise and air quality, reduction of flight time with less fuel burn, and improvements in the safety area. The European ATR Master Plan Level 3 NLC mechanism constitutes a cyclic process which starts with the deployment planning at the European level through the ATM Master Plan Level 3 implementation plan and is followed by reporting and monitoring at two levels. The local level of its involved state through the LSIP mechanism, showing the implementation of the objectives at national level by the respective national ATM stakeholders. And at European level, with the yearly Master Plan Level 3 implementation report, showing the implementation of the objectives at ICAC level. It is important to highlight that there are two other reports at European level, namely the ICAO ASPO monitoring report and the SDP monitoring view, which, will also, which we will also see today. The European ATM Master Plan Level 3 and the C processes are closely linked to other planning and monitoring mechanisms of the organizations that cooperate with Eurocontrol. With the CESAR Deployment Manager, it translated in no more double reporting for implementing stakeholders. As of mid-2021, there is one single monitoring for the Master Plan Level 3 objectives and the CP1 families. There is a main link with the CESAR joint undertaking through the ATM Master Plan. The European Defence Agency has been using some parts of the information in LSIP for the monitoring of the military infrastructure in Europe, also in the past. The results of the LSIP monitoring are used by the International Civil Aviation Organization for the monitoring of the Global Air Navigation Plan. There are also links with the ASA for the European Plan for Aviation Safety that are established at this moment at the planning level. At this level as well, the European Commission's airspace architecture study was introduced in the form of initial outline descriptions in the master plan level three. We support as well the monitoring processes of the network manager colleagues for the network systems coordination and synchronization, NETSYS, and online data interchange. We follow the progress of the standardizations related to CESAR solutions in order to ensure it is fully completed before we initiate the planning and monitoring activities. We are at the same time following up options for a unified planning and monitoring process, tightening it with, among other examples, the network operations plan and the operational excellence program. And now let's have another little quiz on this module. So we see here uh, the following question. Why were the ATM Master Plan Level 3 NLC processes introduced? So let's have a little time for you to reply.
So you all got it correctly. The correct answer is B. To introduce synchronized actions in order to achieve the expected benefits of CES and CESAR by all ATM stakeholders. Uh, and now I will give the pool to my colleague Alexandra for mode three. Good morning, everybody. Um, I will be introducing uh, you the module three of this uh, webinar. However, first allow me to introduce myself. My name is Alexandra Papayuk Zemmer, and I am part of the planning and support unit where I'm a product owner for several monitoring tools, a contact person, and an objective coordinator. Uh, as this module is quite solid, I would like to remind you that please use, uh, if you have any additional question, the question and answers, and we, my colleagues in here will be very happy to assist you if you have any doubts or questions. Now that we can start, um, here we will speak about the various deliverables that we produce. We will mention the main deliverables, therefore the master plan, level three plan, and the implementation report, the 44 LSIP documents, like our ASPO implementation monitoring report and the SDP monitoring view. First, we will speak about the overall master plan. The European ATM master plan is an evolving roadmap for the ATM modernization in Europe and the result of a strong collaboration between all ATM stakeholders. As the technological pillar of the single European sky or the SES initiative, the CES ATM research, it contributes to achieving the CES high level goals and supports the CES regulatory framework. The master plan details not only a high level view of what is needed to be done in order to deliver a high performing ATM system, but also explains why and by when. It does set the framework for the research and development activities performed by the CESAR Joint Undertaking, SGU, in the perspective also of the deployment activities to be performed by all operational stakeholders under the coordination of the CESAR Deployment Manager, SDM, for the regulated common project, initially known as Pilot Common Project, now Common Project 1, to ensure overall consistency and alignment. All three levels of the master plan are under the governance of the SGU with a dedicated project for its maintenance, which is led by Eurocontrol. A full new update of the European ATM master plan was produced and approved at the SGU admin board in December 2019. The next campaign, as already it was mentioned uh, earlier, will be launched next uh, 10th of October 2023 with an expected delivery in 2024. The content of the ATM master plan, it is structured in three levels to allow stakeholders to access an integrated set of information at the appropriate level of detail. Level one is the executive level for executive stakeholders. Next edition is foreseen to be delivered in 2024. Level two, and level three of the master plan provide more details on the operational elements and therefore the target audience is the expert level stakeholders. Level two, the planning and architecture view is available only through the European ATM portal, which provides the detailed planning and architecture information supporting both level one and level three. Level three comprises two deliverables, the implementation plan, and the implementation report. The plan is a set of implementation objectives which are commonly agreed actions, including those resulting from other SES plans, such as the SDP, which aims at achieving stakeholders' performance targets. The implementation report instead provides an assessment of the progress of all implementation objectives at the CAC level. The level three is our focus, a yearly set of mature functionalities ready for implementation that will also be tracked upon. Moving forward, we see that this is the table of the master plan level one, showing you the overall CSR vision stretching to 2040. We have the performance ambitions, the operational view focusing on the nine so-called EOC, essential operational changes, the deployment view with its deployment scenarios and roadmaps with various cost and benefit analysis. And finally, a risk management chapter with mitigation actions. 
the nine essential operational changes organize the contents of the master plan from a technical perspective. They span from CNS to TBO, use space, touching also airport and TMA performance, dynamic airspace, and interconnected network. You will see them coming back at some points in this presentation. So far, we have talked overall about the master plan. Now let's focus on the level three, the LSIP, and how the two elements are linked. The implementation plan is the starting point of any LSIP monitoring cycle, defining the implementation objectives. The plan is a performance-oriented process that describes the common implementation actions required to improve the European ATM network over the next two, five, seven years. It applies to the entire ECAC Plus region. Its elements consists of implementation objectives and stakeholder lines of action, which define the what, why, how, when, where, and by whom. The progress of implementation objectives is tracked through the yearly monitoring cycle, and its result, as you all know, is pack packaged into the National Local Single Implementation Document, broadly known as the LSIP documents. The national progress is consolidated into the implementation report. The document provides an overview of the status of implementation and identifies the delays in implementation at European level. This overview helps to focus the analysis on the most critical delays and to prepare the appropriate remedial action. Therefore, the loop between planning and reporting closes, consulting the two parts of the ATM master plan level three. The implementation plan features two deliverables. We have the main document and the technical annex. The plan 2023, the main document, has been accepted by SGU in early July and by the Eurocontrol Provisional Council in early September 2023. The technical annex to the plan provides the whole set of individual engineering views of the objectives included in the European ATM Master Plan, Implementation Plan Edition 2023. It gives details on how to operationally implement each implementation objective. It only exists in soft copy and it's highly recommended to consult it while updating the LC Plus database. Here you can see the contents of the Master Plan Level 3. We have the plan which is updated on an yearly basis according to the outcome of the monitoring and reporting activities linked to the execution of the previous editions of the master plan level three and the implementation report. Since 2021, it is fully aligned with the SDP with regards to the CP1 ATM functionalities and related SDP families. This document features a general introduction, chapter two, and three are organized per EOC, providing an helicopter view of the, each EOC and then a detailed description for each of the implementation objectives. Chapter four maps the objectives with the AAS and its transition plan. And finally, in the annexes, especially in Annex one, is interesting as it links each of the implementation objectives to other plans such as EASA, EPAS, and the CP1. This is an overview of the various objectives in the master plan level three plan. You will receive more details at the LCP kickoff event, on, which is gonna be held on the 17th of October. Each operational view is a two pager with at the left, as you can see, all implementation objectives and the CSR solutions belonging to the COC, the stakeholders involved and the FOC dates, then a description or a synopsis of the operational view, and then finally the weight of the EOC compared to the other EOCs in the different performance areas. Compared to the operational view, the deployment view is a high level summary of each implementation objective. For each EOC, it provides with a deployment roadmap, giving a more detailed description referring to, as we said, the what, the when, the who, and the where. Here is an example 
of a deployment view for the objective ALM 19.5. Let's focus on few details for this specific objective. As you can see, the what, which is highlighted, is a description that should enable you to have first an idea of what is meant. If you need more, you could look next to the next view, the engineering view, and the technical annex. The when and the who. So here you see that, that for this objective, uh, FOC date being a full operational capability date has been set to 2022. And it applies to all the NSAPs, airspace users, and the network manager. The where, it applies to most EU states and more. The progress status, the completion rate information is taken from the master plan level three report. Here is also a very important detail to know, as said, as the master plan level three is comprehensive. So it includes all elements to be deployed, not only the common project on one element for which the deployment manager is responsible. Now this objective is one of those that is in the portfolio of the CESAR deployment manager as shown under the heading of applicable regulations and standards and the CP1 SDP family reference. And finally, the main actions by the stakeholder. Attention, if you want to see all the actions, you have to have a look at the technical annex, which we will present you more into deep here. The engineering view is the only source providing The engineering view is the only source providing a complete description of each implementation objectives with details of the stakeholder lines of action, the finalization criteria, the explanatory notes, and the reference to the necessary supporting material. The view is not printed, and it's available to the implementers only. The LSIP database in the relevant objective page, the LSIP SharePoint, and on the European ATM master plan. This is the most important view for the specialist involved in the LCP reporting on the implementation objectives progress. As LCP focal point, you should always refer to the engineering view and not only to what is summarized per objective. In this example, we show the detailed description of the implementation objective of AOM 19.4 on management of predefined airspace configuration. <laughs> Here is an extraction of the comprehensive description of the content of AM 19.4. One second. As you can see here is the extraction of the comprehensive description of the content of AM 19.4, sorry for that. And moving forward, we have the list of the stakeholder lines of action, including a reference number, a title, and the associated time frame. Please note that for the CP1 objective, the SLOAs are equivalent to the CSR deployment program deployment milestones. As already mentioned, the view includes also an indication of which performance benefits can be expected, expressed in terms of safety, capacity, operational efficiency, cost efficiency, environment, and security. If you scroll down each EV, you will see that each SLOA features a detailed description, including information on the stakeholders involved and references to supporting material, such as applicable EU regulations, relevant Euro control standards, guidelines, and specifications. There are several ways to access the engineering views. Here you have the uh, links to our platforms that we recommend. So you have the LSIP SharePoint site in a dedicated folder, the LSIP database in each objective page. And finally, they can be downloaded from the European ATM portal, working environment in the deployment view section. After we described the plan in detail, we can now move on the national reporting mechanism to the LSIP process.
The ELSIP process and the ELSIP documents delivered by the states provide a reality check on the implementation status of the ATM Master Plan Level 3. The level of implementation is reported there by all national stakeholders, civil and military, who have committed to this process at the end and provide their signature in the document. The ELSIP process is used as a planning and reporting tool for NSAs, NSAPs, MET service providers, and military authorities. At the end of the cycle, each ECAC state, plus MOAC, Israel, and Morocco, produces one printed document with high-level ATM-related information about its national context. It also features local implementation plans and progress reports on the mature elements of the ATM master plan through the implementation objective. It is an early document with the situation at the end of each calendar year for each, uh, which it is published. The process itself has been extended to the whole Aikawa Europe region, where the ECAC, Israel, and Morocco states are covered directly by the ELSIP states, and no double reporting is created, while the remaining nine non-ECAC states use a specific questionnaire fully linked to the ELSIP process. The LC process has been established 30 years ago, and it's based on the cooperation between Eurocontrol and the states together with their national stakeholders. The, national, the LCIP national focal point is the person responsible for ensuring that correct and consistent LCIP data is provided, respecting set deadlines. It is a nominated person by the state among the staff of the National Regulatory Authority, NSA, or an SAP. The ELSIP focal point is responsible for the coordination of inputs from all national stakeholders during the production of the ELSIP document. The national stakeholders use a number of tools, including the online ELSIP database, the SharePoint, which will be presented in the next slide. The Eurocontrol ELSIP contact person, CP, supports the ELSIP monitoring cycle by mediating between Eurocontrol and the national stakeholders to maintain timely and precise information. The CPs provide necessary support and instructions to their state to update the ELSIP data and work in full support of the national focal point who holds the final responsibility for the provision of consistent and complete ELSIP information. The process itself is supported by specific guidance material and templates that facilitate the work of all involved. The result is the national ELSIP document signed by all concerned parties that presents, among other information, the status of implementation of the objectives at the end of the reporting year. All ELSIP documents are available on the Eurocontrol website and can be consulted. The structure of the ELSIP document, as you can see, is fully harmonized among all the states. For the 2022 edition, uh, to th the document is divided into five chapters, of which the first five, four chapters are presenting the current ATM environment in, in the state, and the final chapter five shows the details of the implementation of the objectives. Chapter one is an introductory chapter which gives an overview of the implementation situation at national level. Chapter two describes the traffic, capacity, and ATFM delay situation per SEC in the state. Chapter three describes the institutional ATM arrangements within the state. Chapter four shows the major ATM implementation projects at national and multinational level. Chapter 5 deals with the other cooperation activities beyond the projects, and it provides an overview of the multinational initiatives. And finally, Chapter 6 is fully devoted to the implementation objectives and their analysis at national level. Now, let's deep dive um, a bit on the taxonomy used in the LSIP and the reporting methodology in general. The progress of each implementation objective is tracked thanks to a status. This applies at the level of objective, stakeholder, and stakeholder lines of action. The definition of these five progress statuses is defined in a consistent way, allowing it to be measured. We will now look 
at each of these progress statuses in detail on the next slide. Let's suppose now we need to report on an objective that it's full operational capability set in the future like 2026. The easy case, rather exceptional in the first year of reporting, is that the state considers that this objective is completed, meaning the functionality is in operational use. This means that the stakeholders do not need to report unless the situation has changed in the meantime. Another example is the not applicable status. This is used if the state is outside the applicability area and it will not implement the objective or if alternative solutions are being implemented. In this case, we always ask the stakeholders to properly justify their decision. And in case of doubt, we do support and encourage to enter into a dialogue between the euro control contact person and the state focal point for additional details. Now, what if, especially for the first year of reporting, one has not made yet his mind? There could be not yet a final decision to implement or there could be not yet a budget. In this case, you could choose the not yet planned status. Of course, the status can always be changed the following monitoring cycle if the stakeholder decides to plan the implementation. Let's check how. When to use the plan status, you will choose it if you already plan to implement the objective as per your business plan, but works have not yet started. However, if works have started, the correct status will be ongoing. The progress calculated in the LSIP tool is higher than 0%, but less than 100%. My last comment about the LSIP document is that in the last data collection cycle, we did produce 44 LSIP documents, one for each of the ECAC states, together with Maastricht Upper Airspace Center and Israel and Morocco. Eurocontrol has been coordinating this activity for 30 years this year. So it gives us early, early the commitment of an ATM implementation of all ECAC states. Now, just the first part uh, of this module is done. So we will have a quick question for you. How many LSIP documents are published on the Eurocontrol website each year? So we will give you a few seconds to reflect on this answer. Okay, and now let's see the final poll of answering. Okay, so most of you got it correct. Of course, we have 44 LSIP documents published every year. Now we will move forward with uh, our presentation where we can move on the master plan level three implementation report. The implementation report provides a holistic view of the implementation of the commonly agreed actions to be taken by the ATAC states in the context of the implementation of CESAR. It is produced annually, developed in close cooperation with the SGU and more than 30 CESAR industrial partners. The implementation report features the report general dashboard and statistic. We have the executive summary, the synoptic view, and finally the deployment view, also organized by EOC targeting experts, which includes further statistics and uh, progress information. Here's an example in the next slide of the deployment view of the objective NAV10 where you can see whose estimated achieve date is beyond the full operational capability date. Hence, it's shown with the status as planned delay. The graph for the completion rate shows in percentages the past and future evolution of states that have completed the implementation objective explanations on changes compared with last year's are added to the graphic description. 
the pie chart highlighted shows that the progress among countries that have not completed yet the objectives. The main development section summaries, uh, summarizes the main developments and the objectives implementation based on the reported LCIP information and expert judgment and analysis. And finally, there is a map, as you can see on your right, depicting each of the states concerned. The map tool is something you can make use to check the implementation status of each objective at a CAC level in a very graphical way. Please note that it's updated once a year, once the LSIP database is frozen. It is very interesting to take a look and explore its feature. You will find it in the ATM portal by using the working environment, which is a very important feature not to disregard. We will move now forward to another deliverable from our side that relies on the inputs from the ATM master plan and the LC process, which is the ICAO Aviation Block Upgrades Implementation Monitoring Report. This report is developed by Eurocontrol, as you heard it at the beginning of this presentation in cooperation with the ICAO, Europe and North Atlantic offices and uses the LSIP mechanism to analyze the level of implementation of aviation system block upgrades at ICAO Europe level. The report is presented on an annual basis to the European Aviation System Planning Group for endorsement, then submitted for inclusion into the annual ICAO Global Air Navigation Report so that the regional development and deployment actions can be coordinated across the regions and global interoperability can be ensured at the highest level. As already mentioned in our former slides, ECAC states Israel and Morocco do not have to report anything in addition as the ASPO modules are linked to the ATM master plan level three implementation objectives and the information is automatically extracted for them. Important to note, as you can see, uh, in this slide is the difference in the geographical scope. Here you see two different areas and the two different data sources. For the 43 LSIP states, the situation is very easy and straightforward. The available information is reused. Hence, this gives us the advantage that there's uh, since nine years, no double reporting for these states. Their reporting through LSIP is reused for the ICAO monitoring requirements. The progress is fully integrated into the LSIP mechanism, but you need to report on the ICAO related objectives irrespective of their EU regulatory status. For the remaining nine states in the ICAO European region, we build very, every year a dedicated questionnaire, typically sent out by the ICAO Europe office in May, so that the information can be collected and integrated in the overall report between September and November. The figure displayed uh, in front of you now mirrors the granularity of the monitoring view and the questionnaire structure. Here, as we mentioned that we are building in-house a questionnaire for the nine states. You have an overview of the structure of the elements. For this year, we had a total of 80 elements out of which 40 were dedicated for the states, 23 were dedicated for the airports, but we also collected information from different groups, such as IMG and METG for our report. The final steps for what's next for the ICAO ASPO implementation report from our team is to deliver a draft report, which will be submitted to the Air Navigation Services Implementation Support Group by the 10th of November for its review. A final report will be officially submitted to the official meeting, the fifth meeting of the European Aviation System Planning Group, which is uh, due to be held between the 20th of November to 1st of December for discussion and endorsement. Here internally in the Euro Control Pass team, we will identify if possible data sources for the elements not yet covered in the report. And remember that the work on the 10th edition of the report is starting with the launch of the LSIP cycle 2023. And now I will um, offer the floor to my colleague, um, Carlo, who will introduce you to another deliverable that we have. 
Thank you, Alex. Good morning. I'm Carlo Capozzi, Synchronization and Coordination Expert at Cesar Deployment Manager. It's a pleasure to join this webinar as SDM representative, introduce, to briefly introduce one of the main outputs produced by the SDM on the basis of the data gathered through the Health C Plus tool towards the common Project One implementation. The CSR Deployment Manager is responsible for the management level of the CSR Deployment Governance, being our mission to synchronize and accelerate the deployment of the Common Project One, making sure ATM keeps up with the challenges of the future. Since uh, its first edition, the early releases of the CSR Deployment Program Monitoring View have represented the single point of truth uh, for reporting the most detailed information on the status on, of the common projects the cornerstone of CESAR deployment uh, in Europe since 2014, supported the implementation of the European Air Traffic Management Master Plan. The CP1 regulation and the SDP 2022 will continue to be the references for the next edition of the SDP Monitoring View 2023, which will present the status of implementation of CP1 as of December 2023. The main objectives of this report are to help the stakeholders to coordinate the future investments, whilst also identifying potential delays towards the full implement CP1 implementation, to bring together ground and airborne related information, providing an updated snapshot on CP1 implementation, and to provide several views to show the overall progress of deployment, the progress of specific technological or operational elements, and the status of individual stakeholders and countries. To measure the progress of each CP1 implementation, the status of specific SDP deployment milestones, DMs, that would lead to the full deployment of a specific family is monitored and assessed. It's worth highlighting that the SDP families and deployment milestones fully match with the related implementation objectives and the stakeholders' lines of action, respectively. To ease the navigation through the CP1 regulated elements in relation to the CSR deployment program. I leave the floor to Alexandra. Thank you very much, Carlo. Now we will have, of course, um, a last quiz question on this uh, module to see if we manage to get your attention and to un an understanding. How often is the master plan implementation report produced? Every year, every two years, or every month? A couple of seconds for you to have it to have your answer. Yes, correct. Uh, indeed, our correct answer is every year. So good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Javier Rosendo from Eurocontrol PAS team. Uh, as my colleagues, I also have a role as contact person and objective coordinator uh, in this uh, process. And I am also in charge of uh, the LCIP coordination uh, for all the process. Uh, so we will resume uh, the session now with uh, the module four that consists on the process. Uh, this module will clarify why the European ATM master plan and LC processes were introduced, how this mechanism was created, and what are the links with other reporting mechanisms in Europe. First, let's have a look at the overall yearly timeline. Remember, firstly, we start with the elaboration of the Master Plan Level 3 Implementation Plan. In parallel, once the database is frozen in March, the production of the Master Plan Level 3 Implementation Report starts. Simultaneously, our SDM colleagues will be working on the elaboration of the Monitoring View Report. These reports use the information in the LC Plus database and as every year, the Master Plan Level 3 report will be finalized after the month of May. Then, the final deliverable is the ICAO ASPO Implementation Monitoring Report. This report reuses the information from the Master Plan Level 3 Implementation Report, but it also takes it from the specific LC Plus based questionnaires sent to the non NICAC states from the ICAO E region. As typically, these ones are sent out later than the LCIP documents, so we can only start the work on this deliverable as of August. 
The work on the LSIP documents starts with the feeding of information in the database and finishes when all the signatures for the national LSIP documents are collected. After that, we will start again with the work on our implementation reports. This next year will be exceptional as we will not be delivering the master plan level three implementation plan as usual. So we see that this is an annual cycle that stretches over approximately two years and we are permanently and at times simultaneously working on various deliverables throughout the mission uh, period of time. Now let's have a look to the supporting materials of the cycle, which include on the one hand, a new web-based guidance material site based on all the material elaborated during previous cycles. And on the other hand, the LSIP template, which will be the basis of the first LSIP national draft. These materials are reviewed yearly and updated where relevant. Let's now have a closer look at the contents and structure of the guidance material. There you can find several areas that cover the LSIP background area, containing basic information on the process. Also, the SDP monitoring area that includes all the required information for your CP1 exercise. But you will also see other big areas related to how to report on the progress of implementation, how to fill in the reporting inform information into the LC Plus database, or how to extract the data from the LC Plus database and related tools. Also, just after summer, we distribute the LC Plus 2023 flyer to our stakeholders community along with a reminder to register to yearly kickoff event. This serves as an introduction to the new LC Plus 2023 cycle, and it provides a very high level overview of what's new and what to expect in the following cycle. And now let's look to the specific LC Plus timeline for the upcoming 2023 cycle. As previous years, the preparation of this cycle started well in advance for Eurocontrol together with our colleagues from SDM. For the stakeholders, the real works start on the kickoff event, which this year will take place on the 17th of October. However, this year we are allowing all the stakeholders to use the database since the 18th of September in order to anticipate the preparation of the work. At the kickoff event, we will try to guide the audience through the content that needs to be reported via the LC Plus database and the key steps of the process, which you can also find in the guidance material. Then the estates will have up until the 31st of January to complete their work by filling in the information in the database. By the 31st of January, all the objectives, the CP1 questionnaires and the CESA solution questionnaires shall be stable. And as of the 1st of February, the database will be blocked for modifications. Then the data, data cross-check period is the time used to analyze and review the stable data in depth and will take place during the month of February. The experts will have a few days to review the data and give their inputs by the 20th of February. All the inputs will be encoded in the database in the form of change request. The states will review these comments and will reply to them, while the CP will do the relevant modifications in the database. Eventually, on the 8th of March, the LC Plus database will be frozen. It is then when the work on the Master Plan Level 3 implementation report and the SDP monitoring view can be started. During the following weeks, the rest of the LC documents shall be finalized so that our working level agreed can be reached. And from then, the estates will internally collect the relevant signatures, which will tr translate into a final public document. Now you can see uh, a diagram that offers an overview that describes the interrelation and interconnections of the main actors participating or involved in the LC Plus cycle. It displays the close collaboration of Eurocontrol and SDM during the data cross-check period aimed to align two reporting streams into a consolidated one. It also shows the key and central role of the contact person, which acts as the main point of contact and intermediary or mediator among the three parties. 
it is important to understand the roles and responsibilities of the different parties involved in the cycle. We need to differentiate six well-defined roles. Let's start by the national LCIP focal point. This is a role that falls on the state side. The national focal point is not only the main coordinator of the national stakeholders during the LCIP cycle, but also the coordinator of the data gathered and used for building the LCIP document. Usually, it is nominated by the state among the staff of the NSA, the regulatory authority, or the NASP. The second relevant role are the national stakeholder aspects. They gather the data for its input in the LCIP Plus database and collaborate in the LCIP document elaboration process. The national expert, together with the focal point, will also review the CRs. The Eurocontrol LCIP contact person is the mediator between Eurocontrol, SDM, and the state during the LCIP cycle. The CP works in coordination with the focal point and other stakeholders and provides support during the entire cycle in the data gathering and the compilation of the different chapters and sections of the document. The Eurocontrol objective coordinators will work in collaboration with LCIP contact persons, SDM coordinators, and objective experts during the LCIP Plus cycle. The OCs will review the gathered data and coordinate with the SDM coordinator to cross-check the input received from Eurocontrol experts with the one received from XDM experts for the CP1 scope. Also, they will provide feedback on the rest of non-CP1 objectives and states. The SDM team is involved during the LCIP Plus cycle through the SDM coordinators. They will be the main reference for CP1 related objectives and families in EU states and will work in close collaboration with the LC focal uh, contact persons, the SDM experts, and the objective coordinators. They will review the information in the database and coordinated revision analysis with the relevant experts. Finally, the SDM and Eurocontrol experts will review the data and provide comments to SDM coordinators and objective coordinators for the different objectives and families. So these comments will be translated into the database via change request by the contact person. This information is also included in more depth in the LC Plus guidance material, where the LC roles and responsibilities are developed in detail. A final comment in this module is about the LCIP expert group. This is a group of national experts from all categories of national stakeholders. The Eurocontrol team does not define all the processes alone. Therefore, with the LCIP expert group members, we hold regular meetings to discuss all aspects of the LCIP Plus process, such as the working arrangements, the methodology, the enhancements at each cycle, etc. This group is our sounding board and here you can see the logos of some of the current participating organizations. So now let's go with uh, the little quiz on this module, which the question is, when will the ELC uh, database freeze uh, this year? It will be in January, in February, or in March. We need some seconds now for you to answer. Meanwhile, I would like to encourage you to keep uh, delivering your questions through the Q&A. And of course, we will give more details in the kickoff event and in the bilateral meetings that we will hold between contact persons and uh, the focal points, uh, where we will give uh, more details on the process. So I see that there are some uh, doubts in this question, uh, which is good. So we, we will need to review this uh, module because the answer is uh, the, the most voted is in March. It will be the 8th of March uh, as uh, the same date that we had last year. So now I will uh, give the floor again to my colleague Itzaso, which will present the module on the tools. Um, good morning again. I will be presenting you module five now that our our tools. 
This section introduces the web tool supporting our monitoring and reporting process. In particular, we are going to talk about the LC Plus database. We will then present our two SharePoints with a special mention to our new guidance SharePoint. Then we will have a look at the European ATM portal and eventually the Eurocontrol website. This slides offers you an overview of the five tools that will be presented to you and points at their purpose. So, how do we use each tool? The LC Plus database enables local stakeholders to provide and manage implementation progress information about objectives, SDP families, and projects. It also allows to extract reports and visualize statistics and charts. The LSIP Online SharePoint is a cloud-based service that provides a common platform for collaboration, document management, and information sharing between the contact person and the stakeholders. For the 2023 cycle, we have also developed a new SharePoint for consultation purposes in which we included all the guidance material and tutorials to assist you during the cycle. Then we have the European ATM portal, which is the home of the European ATM master plan. Here, the three levels of the master plan and their connections are shown. The portal is also a consultation tool for you to visualize maps, tables, or links between the master plan levels. And eventually, the Eurocontrol website containing news, information, and the links to the relevant tools and documentation. So, let's get started with the first tool that is our LC Plus database. The LC Plus database is a restricted web application used by more than 400 authorized users, allowing national stakeholders to provide detailed information on each implementation objective or SDP family, including assessments against objectives description, finalization criteria, and overall European planning information. Data access is restricted at country level, except for members of the same functional airspace block who may share information among partners. The application provides also automatic warnings in case any missing mandatory information or inconsistencies are detected. The communication and coordination between the LSIP contact person and the LSIP focal point is also supported by change request notifications. On the homepage of the LSIP Plus database, you can see the timeline summarizing the workflow of the cycle, which is divided in three main periods that point out at the main milestones of the cycle. The first period is dedicated to data input and stabilization. And you can see it goes from the 18th of September with the opening of the database until February. And it is flagged in blue. The second phase is the data cross-check period, which lasts as of February until the 8th of March 2024. And you see it in orange. And the final period goes from the day of the receipt of the database, that is the 8th of March, until reaching working level agreed around the 15th of April. And this one you see it in green. The number of days left until the freezing of the database is shown at the top right of the screen. On the left, a live dashboard shows information about objectives, families, open warnings, and open change requests that need action. This is an overview of the progress of your work and highlights the pending actions. By clicking on the open warnings or the open change requests, a hyperlink will open the referred pages, listing the summary of the items that need to be addressed. The user can then acknowledge the new warnings or the new change requests, and they won't appear as you anymore. Also, on the left side on the home page, there is a section reflecting useful links with, which are listed for easy reference. For the 2023 edition, two new links have been included one for the LSIP guidance SharePoint, and another one for the LSIP monitoring email address. Now, let's check how the objectives are shown in the database. By default, you will see the list of all the active objectives, including the SDP families or CP1 objectives. We'll focus now on the CP1 objectives or SDP families, which are the ones feeding the SDP monitoring view and also included in our master plan level three report. There is a filtering button, the CP1 SDP button that displays the SDP families of the CESA deployment program, mapping them with the master plan level three objectives. 
The information that is shown in this view is, as you can read from left to right, the SDP family code, the SDP family title, the linked implementation objective code, which is also a hyperlink that you can click on to redirect you to the objective, the implementation objective title, the objective type, the scope, the FOC date, the foreseen implementation date, the status, the progress percentage, the stability information, and the path coordination information. Now let's see the view when clicking on an objective. When an objective is selected, a dedicated page is opened. The left side of the, of the screen shows the SDP family or objective tree, allowing the user to easily navigate through the different levels. First, we have the SDP family or objective level, then the organization and stakeholder level, and the third one is the deployment milestone or SLOI level. And now, how do we work on the objectives? How do we input the data? While working in an objective, there is a single screen that includes both the edit and read mode. In order to edit an item, it is enough to click on it and edit the content. Users need to keep in mind that some fields, for example, dates and percentage at the stakeholder and national level are not editable, but automatically calculated based on the information given at deployment milestone or SLOI level. The editable items are clearly identified with a pencil, which appears when hovering on the item. To identify an item as consolidated or stable, it is enough to click on the relevant button and the change will be immediate. When all the changes are done, you must remember to click in the Save button to save your work. Now we will introduce you to different additional parameters which can be accessed in the LC Plus database. The second tab in the top bar menu is dedicated to projects. Here you can access the list of national and multinational projects as well as automatically generate relevant reports. The projects appear divided per scope, national, multinational and FAP in different tabs. The projects provided by the state in the LC Plus database shall be significant in terms of impact on the performance areas at national or regional level. They do not have to be limited only to the projects described in the performance plan, as sometimes states may have new projects starting after its submissions that are also relevant. The next tab that we have is dedicated to questionnaires and includes the different questionnaires that need to be filled in during the cycle in a drop-down list. As an example, you can see the surveillance questionnaire. We'll have full information on all the questionnaires that will be provided during the kickoff event on the 17th of October, as well as during bilateral meetings with the contact person. Also, further comprehensive information is available in the LCP guidance SharePoint. Let's talk now about how to generate reports. The SC Plus database offers the possibility to automatically generate two different types of reports, the high-level report and the detailed report. The high-level report summarizes the implementation progress at objective and stakeholder levels. The detailed report gives more detailed information data at SLOA and checkpoint levels. Both reports include a number of additional optional fields to display the various links of the implementation objectives with different planning elements. Then we have the LC Plus database analytics section, which provides tailored views on the data in the form of several charts and tables. As an example, we are showing the high-level summary table, which displays the current progress and status for all the objectives. This table can be filtered by organization type, ACC, DMA, and progress status, among other possibilities. The last section in the analytics tab is dedicated to the SDP monitoring output. Since the publication of the Common Project 1 and the alignment between the ATM Master Plan Level 3 Implementation Plan and the CERSA Deployment Program, the AC Plus database features a new dashboard under the Analytics tab. 
PSCP monitoring output built in Power BI is a dynamic dashboard that calculates the progress of the common project one for each SCP family and service in the relevant applicability area. The data refreshes three times a day following the updates in the SC Plus database. To finish up with the database, we'll talk about its link to NetSys. The network systems coordination and synchronization monitoring reporting cycle runs in parallel with the LSIP cycle. Several NetSys ATM system functionalities are covered in the ATM master plan level 3. In particular, a subset of implementation objectives, stakeholder lines of action, SLOAs, provide information that suits NetSys monitoring purpose. A unidirectional synchronization from the LC Plus database to the NetSys database is therefore possible, benefiting from the information gathered through the LC process. Such cooperation, implemented by a set of aggregation and conversion algorithms, will also allow a mutual improvement of the quality of the data, avoiding at the same time double reporting issues. The predefined link of the, SL of the LC SLA with a matching NetSys ATM functionality is visible in both reporting tools allowing the switch between reporting elements through both applications. So now enough about the, the database, let's see what else is there for you. The next tool on our agenda is the LSIP SharePoint. The LSIP SharePoint site is a collaboration tool for the LSIP contact persons, stakeholders, and focal points. It represents a secure space on the internet to share, organize, collaborate, and manage the LC process. The homepage includes relevant links to external sites and tools, such as the link to the database, the guidance SharePoint, or to the CP1 regulation. The homepage also includes a list of events that remind you of the main milestones of the current cycle. This specific SharePoint is mainly designed as a workspace to update the LC document throughout the different phases of the cycle. Each state has exclusive access to a dedicated library containing the documents related to its own national environment. This library will also include the bilateral meeting presentation slides, the LSIP document drafts, as well as any other files that your contact person might upload, upload for you to assist your work. And as we see here, our next tool is also a SharePoint. The second SharePoint for LSIP matters is the LC Plus Guidance SharePoint that we created recently for the 2023 cycle. The purpose of this SharePoint is to offer you a centralized tool in which we store all the available guidance materials, tutorials, and working instructions related to the LC process. Therefore, in contrast with the SharePoint presented in the previous slide, this SharePoint is a tool only for consultation. And now let's look at another very useful tool, the European ATM portal. All of you can get access to the non-public working part of this tool once you have an account on YSKY Teams. The portal is designed to cover all necessary information concerning ATM from research and development to deployment. The deployment overview shows all master plan level three and LSIP information. It focuses on the implementation objectives at planning level, while at reporting level, it presents the yearly cycle of the European monitoring that under, underpins the master plan level three. The implementation objectives planning tab presents a list of all active implementation objectives, including detailed descriptions of the stakeholder lines of actions. It also presents the relationship of the implementation objectives to the level two of the master plan and to the CP1 elements. The implementation objectives monitoring section provides a view of the implementation progress of the objectives through specific reports and maps and statistics. It also provides the implementation progress view at the state level and an aggregated view at FAB level.
And our last tool of today is the Eurocontrol website. So in the website, you will find additional information. You can read about our mission and also brief description of the ATM planning, reporting and monitoring activities. It also provides links to our main deliverables, such as the LSIP documents, the Master Plan Level 3 Implementation Plan and Report, and the ECAOS Boom Monitoring Report, as well as the links to our uh, LSIP database and the LSIP SharePoint site. And here uh, we see our latest deliverables in which you find as well uh, the LSIPs. And now uh, our little quiz for this uh, fifth module that asks, what are the main two tools used for the production of the LSIP document? A, the LSIP Plus database and the LSIP SharePoint site. B, the LSIP Plus database and the Eurocontrol website. Or C, the LSIP SharePoint and the Eurocontrol website. We leave some seconds to receive your answers. And the correct answer is A, the LSIP Plus database and the LSIP SharePoint site. Uh, so now I'll give the floor to Maria that will wrap up today's uh, webinar with a summary. Thank you, Itzaso. So let's move now to the uh, last part of the presentation. Before we go, uh, I saw there was only one question raised about the access to the SharePoint, uh, to which uh, have you already uh, replied that you first need to have an OneSky Teams account uh, from your control and then uh, to request the access to the uh, to the SharePoints via LSIP support. We are aware that already a few uh, stakeholders have requested access to the SharePoint guidance uh, website, but, but as it was still under elaboration, we will start granting uh, the access to it uh, just after we finish this introductory session. So if you already requested, please uh, bear with us, uh, we will, um, we will allow you um, to, to see what is there and more details uh, in, um, in the coming days. Now we go with, um, I don't see any more ans uh, re questions. Uh, and then we really come already to the last part of the webinar where we will make a short summary of what you have uh, seen really again to wrap up of what is the master plan level three and the LC plus in a nutshell and once again to uh, indicate where you can get more info and provide you with a brief overview of all useful links that have been mentioned uh, all along this presentation. Uh, what you have seen today during this one hour and a half, two hours, we tried here with all the colleagues to explain to you what are the main requirements that have driven the creation of the uh, ATM Master Plan Level 3 and the LC planning and monitoring process. Uh, what are the deliverables that we are producing and developing uh, throughout this uh, different interactions and through the main uh, cycle that we run we, uh, each year. Also, we introduce you with the timeline uh, that uh, for several years it's already uh, stable, but uh, it is important to keep in mind for all participating what are the key milestones and activities that are happening uh, in the Frame, uh, frame of uh, the yearly cycle, and then also what will be the main tools that are supporting us. So this is what we have covered. And we, um, 
we are aware that you have been exposed to a very complex uh, information and a lot of different uh, aspects of this um, process. But even if it may seem complex, it is still not a rocket science. It is a process that has been there for almost 30 years and has proven to bring added value because it still remains the pragmatic mechanism that allows us to uh, correspond to those different uh, global European local requirements in a very cost effective manner as it really unifies the reporting effort uh, that uh, at the end supports the elaboration, the development of multiple deliverables of multiple uh, reports at national level through the LCIP documents, at European level through the ATM master plan level report, and at global level uh, for the um, ICAO ASPOS implementation. Uh, we are continuously also adapting and changing in order to meet the new requirements that the different uh, um, that the different actors uh, are bringing into um, into this reporting mechanism. But what is most important is that we all do this uh, together with you. We are working with you, with our stakeholders, because your contribution. I hope you have uh, been able to understand this. Your contribution is key. Through the tools that we are putting here, here at your disposal, through this collaboration that is uh, put in place in the context of the LC process, we are helping you to uh, better plan, to better report on the progress, and also to work this together with our colleagues from the CESAR GU, from the CESAR Deployment Manager, but also from IKO and EASA. So your contribution to this process is really key. And that is why it is very important that you are informed really to the maximum about what is required, about what is uh, not only the process itself, but what is the implementation objectives content, because the implementation objectives are really at the core of our activity. Um, and this year, during the LCIP process official kickoff event, we will try to make a special focus on communicating of what exactly are the new objectives and what are important aspects of the content of those that you need to uh, address and to uh, keep in mind during this new reporting cycle. Uh, another opportunity to get more information about this, about the implementation objective content, also in the way how you should be involved in the process, is through the bilateral meetings where the LCIP contact person will be present for your state Together with the state focal points, it will be a good moment to get really all the details that are not clear or have not been uh, covered by today's session or the kickoff event. Last but not least, uh, as this process, as you have understood, is closely uh, now linked together with the monitoring uh, process uh, run by the CESAR deployment manager, it is also very important that you are well informed about what is the content and what is exactly concerning your states uh, in the context of uh, CP1. During the process, as it was already uh, important, uh, shown uh, in the previous uh, slides, the main contact person for you will be the LCIP contact person. But uh, if you have any other questions related to the CP1, you can also address yourself to the SDM liaison officers. If you get, would like to get more familiar with really the detailed LCP information by yourself, you can go to the ATM portal that has been just presented or directly to the LCP database, uh, which normally uh, is accessible through your next national focal point. The different countries have different ways of organization, but usually the one who is uh, uh, 
for each country, it is the national focal point that uh, provides uh, and allows an access and consultation to the database. Then, on the general context, once again, the main point of reference, European Master Plan Portal, the master plan level plan and report documents that you can download from the Eurocontrol public site. Uh, you have also all the LCP information, also uh, directly accessible through uh, the main site. Where, and from, where, uh, from there, you are going to be guided to the different share points uh, and to the tool uh, and directly to the database. Of course, very importantly, that you all get familiar with the CESAR deployment program, which is also accessible for you for the uh, download through the CESAR deployment manager website. If you have any questions or if you have any for need of any further support, please do not hesitate to directly ask the LCIP support, which is here available through this um, email address. Uh, which is monitored and uh, depending on the request, the different, uh, uh, the different questions and requests for clarifications are being dealt with. I don't see any other questions in the Q&A. And if uh, you are not going to raise any more, then I would like to thank you very much for your attention. And we are looking forward to meet you in uh, in the context of uh, the new LSIP 2023 cycle. Thank you very much.